Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, once again we're back on with the uh, Toshiba T1000 uh, laptop repair. And first a bit of good news, um, my real built battery does appear in fact to be working. Now, it wasn't working straight away and um, one of the actual cells that I'd used, which I had tested, um, when I was trying to charge it, that particular cell was getting hot. So I think it's basically got a high internal resistance. So I put a new, um, well, a new salvage cell in, and initially it wouldn't charge it. It was doing exactly as I showed in the last video. You'd switch it on, the light would come on for a second and then go out again, and that's all it was doing. So I thought, I wonder if the battery is just really, really flat. So what I did is I got out my um, little um, IMAX B6. This is basically it's a little universal um, intelligent charger. And I know it says LiPo on it, um, balanced charger. Yes it is, but it also it does so many other things. I mean these are, it's not a real IMAX B6, uh, it's a cheap Chinese copy of one. Uh, but they are brilliant. Uh, basically it'll charge anything from um, an old lead acid cell up to um, NICADs, NIMH, um, um, lithium ion, you name it, um, 18650s, stuff like that, um, this will charge it. You can also you can use it to discharge batteries to do balances on them. Uh, if you build a battery pack, it's got a bal it's actually a balanced charger, so um, it will charge a full battery pack. Uh, it's just a really handy thing to have, and they're like under 20 quid, these cheap Chinese copy ones. Uh, so basically, I stuck it on. Um, I stuck it on that and set it up as a 4.8 volt um, nickel uh, NiCad battery, and uh, I charged it for um, a good few hours, only at, um, a couple of hundred milliamps on that. I then put it back in the computer, and um, yeah, it works. Um, I fire the computer up, um, the light comes on, it then goes red, which I believe means it's charging. Like I said, I didn't put a full charge in the battery, I just literally give it a, um, like a booster charge to actually get it working, um, up to voltage. Um, so the computer could then take over charging it, which it is doing, and that's where we come up to our next problem. Uh, because after I'd had it running, uh, I was running this thing for about 10 minutes, I'm, uh, I'm not actually going to... In fact, yeah, I'll switch it on and just give you a brief um, show of what it's actually doing. So if I uh, power it up, as you can see, if I, uh, it's not doing it now. I wonder if it's actually um, died completely. Now it's back to doing what it was doing then before. Anyway, basically what happened is I had it running for about um, 10 or 15 minutes and I started getting um, the smell of um, rotten fish. And we all know what that means. And basically, the um, electrolytic capacitors in the DC to DC converter here, which is all to do with powering the computer, doing the charging, and everything, they're they are leaky as hell. Um, obviously, they didn't like working again for um, a living, and I'm going to have to change before we go any further, unless we just want to run it off five volts. If we feed five volts into it, it doesn't matter because it doesn't use any of that DC to DC converter. There, we're basically bypassing it. Uh, but if we want to actually use it with the battery and get it all to charge and work as it should, we're going to have to change them electrolytic capacitors um, in there. Which is a bit of a bugger because it means I'm going to have to dis disassemble the whole computer to actually um, get there. But at least it gets you, you get to see the computer completely disassembled. So uh, we may as well get on with it. They're not going to change themselves. I think we've only got like three or four to change. And they're them brown ones. And I found... So much stuff in the 1980s that's um, built with them brown capacitors. Um, I mean, they're not a particularly bad make or anything, but they do leak for fun. I've had loads of issues in um, old Apple products with um, them electrolytic capacitors. Right, uh, I think we'll uh, we'll get the old anti-static strap out. See, and we're going to be getting um, deep inside this thing. We'll get the rest of the crud out of the way. Let's get it disconnected. I've also I've got a new monitor just set up for testing because um, I'm knocking everything everywhere now. Sugar. Don't want to knock my screws off. Just get them cables out of the way like that. Move my discs. Yeah, I've got this little monitor I'm using at the moment because this thing just will not sync to this um, computer properly. That syncs first time every time. Anyway, let's get the old um, anti-static strap on. There we go. We're safe. We can, um, we'll get the new battery out. 
So it was charging it, and uh, like I say, the light went from green to red, which I think is the charge indicator. The computer fired up, booted, I was just messing about, and then all of a sudden I started smelling that uh, rotten fish. And I had a bit of a waft around with a soldering iron, and it's definitely, it's these capacitors here which are, gonna be, which are the issue. So we will um, get them off the board, well a little bit of a clean around the board obviously where they've been and um, hopefully that's the only issue we're going to find. Right, um, I think we need to take the disc drive, we'll take this out so we don't damage it. Now as far as I'm aware this is a little, um, it's basically it's a RAM expansion. These things um, come with, from the factory I think with half a meg of RAM. This has got one meg of RAM. But you can't use really one meg of RAM on a um, XT class uh, computer. So what it does is that it uses 640k for your actual um, memory and the rest it uses a RAM disk, a battery backed up RAM disk. So it has like a tiny little um, solid state hard drive really. Um, obviously if the battery um, fails you lose your um, data in it. But um, it's another cool little feature this laptop has like the fact it's got um, DOS in ROM. And I believe that's what that um, that card is. Yeah, we've got we've got RAM on the back of it. Um, uh, two five six by one two three four five six. Um, that's definitely RAM ICs. We've got a control. I presume that's a controller there. It's a Toshiba chip anyway. Some glue logic. So yeah, I'll put that to one side. Let's. Uh, I think we've got to take the keyboard out as well. Have the keyboard. Uh, there we go. Let's hopefully, we can disconnect this without breaking anything. Right, there's a release on it. Or do you just pull it? Ah, no, it's got a release on it. There we go. That's out. That's the keyboard uh, disconnected, and we may have a look at that because there are. It, it all works. But there are a few keys, like the A key, that need a bit of a stern press to actually get them to initialise. So. Uh, Possibly before this thing all goes back together, we might um, strip that keyboard down and give it um, a look over and a clean. But I'll put that to one side for now. Um, I can disconnect the PC speaker, that's nice and easy. And a very nice little flat slimline speaker there. And it is a proper speaker rather than a Pezio. It's just incredibly flat. Let me see if we can pop it out and let's have a look. I don't think it's a Pezio. It certainly doesn't look like it is from this side. If it'll release, if it's going to be a pain, I won't do because I don't want to break the plastic. But let's, come on, out you come. There we go. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a proper tiny little speaker. It's like the type of thing you'd find in um, there's a little metal diaphragm on it. The type of thing like you'd find in a telephone. Let's snap that back in place. The sounds, you know, for a PC speaker kind of sound is quite nice actually. Get this screw out and we can get the disk drive out of the way. Take the disk out of it. There we go. There's something else holding that disk drive. Oh, it's got one there. drive will come out. Come on, out you come. There's something else holding that disk drive. What else is holding it? We've undone that screw there. There's nothing on the bottom to hold it. There's nothing there to hold it. So why won't you come out? Oh, just need a little bit more uh, upward force. There we go, that's the disk drive out. Here's a really, pretty much a standard PC 720k um, disk drive by the look of it. Yeah, 
yeah, bog standard 720k I think. Although the connector on the back is a little bit different. In fact it looks like that cable's actually part of the disk drive by the look of it. It's a bit unusual. I'll put that to one side. I'm sure I could wire in a standard disk drive if um, I really, really had to. But um, it does seem to work. If we can get it to boot, that'd be nice, but it does seem to work. Right, now, for, we've got a few other electrolytics on here. We've got one there, one there, one there. Um, a little one down there. But I don't think they're going to be a major issue. They should, they're probably alright. It's, like I say, it's them brown ones there which I'm um, thinking are going to be most likely the, uh, the leaky ones. Because they're the ones I've had issues with in the past. Anyway, let's get the board out of the actual, uh, out of the actual case. What else have we got to undo? is holding it. Ah, there's one there. I missed one. Okay. Oops. Out we come. Right, hopefully that should release the uh, release the board. Where have I missed one? Or rather, what have I missed? There we go. That's free. Get that out of the way for now. Even that's so really nice and clean. I can't believe how clean this computer is for its age. And there we are, that's the board out, and it really it's absolutely spotless. It's like in perfect condition. There's our RAM down that side there. And we can spot that there. Um, yeah, we've got the um, Two five two fifty six k by two ICs there, so they'll be um, by eight each, won't they? Um, and the same there, so that's our five twelve k of RAM um, on board. Our BIOS is there. Um, I haven't spotted the um, eight oh eight six processor yet. I must admit. I'm wondering if they're using something um, something custom and um, Toshiba. It's certainly not a standard 40-pin um, um, 8086 or 8088, definitely. There's nothing like that on this board. So it's definitely something... Uh, it could... Could it be that? 885... Uh, that's a T7885 Toshiba. That's a bit That's a bit perplexing. I was expecting to find um, something I could at least identify as the CPU, and I can't. Uh, what's really weird is everything um, I see wise seems to be surface mount and then for some bizarre reason right here we have a Toshiba um, TC8521P is that could that be a clock generator I see and there wasn't a surface mount uh, equivalent at the time that's a possibility nice board though very I mean I don't I'm not a huge surface mount fan I like um, through hole technology but it's a nicely laid out, nicely presented board. Let's um, let's have a look at doing these capacitors anyway. Oh, and then we've got loads of lovely surface mount on the bottom. That's going to be fun to work around, isn't it? Certainly, when um, surface mount was um, first starting, really, this it's probably only a dual layer board. It's the even the routing on it, you can tell it's like early computerized um, routing with the way it's done. All straight lines and very straight angles everywhere. It's um, it really is a nice piece of um, nice piece of work. Right, let's have a look at this first capacitor. Let's try to find the damn thing. That's the um, that's the big issue. And then obviously one of your big issues is you've got so much surface mount stuff around it. Once you've identified it, it's trying to remove it and not 
disturb um, a load of surface mount components like there's a tiny tiny little um, surface mount cap there and one of the lead out wires for the capacitor he wants to replace is right next to it that's going to make taking that off really 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 tricky Might just see if I can heat it and just walk it out of the um, walk it out of the board actually. Oh, the smell! As soon as I touch that uh, the leg of that capacitor, I can smell it. It really is uh, very leaky. That unfortunately, when these capacitors tend to leak, they do. Uh, seem to affect the solder, they make it harder to um, flow the solder. This is going to be a bit of a pain to do, but they definitely, definitely uh, very, very leaky. I wonder, I wonder if it would be better getting them off the board, pulling them off the board and then um, desoldering the legs from this side because there's so much surface mount stuff around them legs um, I don't want to risk taking the wrong component out this is a technique I have used before with these um, capacitors if you basically break them loose and pull them out and you see we've left the two legs behind there they're basically what the um, foils inside the capacitor were connected to um, now if I was being really 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 um, snide I could just solder a new um, capacitor straight onto them um, bits there Let me just zoom you in so you can see what I'm um, pointing about right, can you see here where um, it's basically just left the two um, prongs from the capacitor if I was being really cheap I could just literally solder a new capacitor on them I'm not going to, I'm now going to heat up them legs and pull them out through this side of the board and I'm hoping doing it that way I'll do, I'll disturb the back of the board less because you will have seen um, until I've um, actually zoomed it in now but can you see how populated so can, get, can you see how populated with surface mount the back of the board is and my concern is, um, especially with the fact I'm going to have to use a fair bit of heat uh, because of how nasty this um, solder is because of the leaking electrolyte that um, I might risk disturbing some of these um, surface mount components on here so I'll, like I say, I'll have a go at pulling the legs through from um, from this side we should, um, we should have a little bit better look with that and what do I need to replace anyway it's a 470 UF at 10 volts. I'm sure I've got something to uh, replace them with. Let's get the uh, capacitor stock out. That is a that's a 220 at 10. That's a hundred. 220 at 35. So 470 at 25 volts. That'd fit. It's a little bit on the big side, but um, it'll certainly do the job, and it's a new capacitor. Let me uh, see if we've got anything slightly smaller. That's a thousand. Hopefully, we'll need a load of two twenties. We've got loads and loads of two twenties. We'll see. Let's have a look in my other box of random caps. I do need to restock on the um, capacitors. I must admit, I'm getting a bit low. That's another 220. 220. 160. 1000. 220. Two twenty. That's a hundred. I think we'll have to use that um that slightly bigger one there. Two twenty. It's a thousand. Two twenty. I've got lots of two twenties. 
220, 100, that's a 470 but that's ridiculously big, 2200, 1000, that's a 1000, that's 100, in fact I wonder if I've got a salvage one that would do. Let's just have a quick look on a board I've got that I know has got some good capacitors on it. If not, we'll go with that one that we've got, but um, I don't know if this has got anything that will be suitable on it not. Oh, what's that there? No. No, I think we'll have to go with that one. No, I've not got anything. Um, I've not got anything close enough. I don't think. What's that there? Hang on. Let's have a look at this one. So we'll have to use that slightly large one, but never mind, I mean it'll fit, it's not a problem, it's um, not going to not, not go in or anything. So we'll try heating it up from this side, see if we can get the solder to flow and pull the uh, leg out like this. The only problem with this is the smell, I might uh, knock me sick before we uh, get the part out. Oops. I have to add a little bit of solder to that. Get it to flow a bit better. This is going to be a real pain. One problem with leaking electrolytic capacitors, unfortunately. Electrolyte when it get when it leaks out it kind of like gets into the solder and it um, it changes the solder it changes the property of the solder so it's not um, it doesn't flow like it used to do. I mean, I have actually resorted in the past when I've had this issue to actually drilling, um, drilling through because I've just not been able to get it to uh, come out satisfactorily. I hope I don't have to uh, resort to that um, in this instance. I really do. That really is a, like a last resort, last resort type thing. This is not going to be easy. This is going to be real, real pain. I think. Zoom out so you can see really what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and try and heat them up from this side. It's going to be a right pain in the uh, pain in the what not that. What's that part there? As that one's just pushed through a little bit but not not properly like not like you'd expect it to but it might just give us that bit that we can uh, perhaps heat it up from the other side now and um, get the thing out let's try the next one which is there
That is not for melting. We may actually do less damage soldering. I really don't want to have to do that. It'd look so messy. Tack it on from that side. It'd be horrendous to do, but let's give it one more time so let's see if we can get them out but if we can't we may actually have to bite the bullet and just um, solder it onto the end of the old I say I really didn't want to have to do that it's a proper bodge way of doing it but if you're going to actually do more damage to the board getting them out then what else do you do It's not for unsoldering. Right, we're going to do more damage than um, good here. Because the board's so fine around there. What I'm going to do, let's snip these legs close off. Like that. So we're just going to leave two little um, bits in there to solder to. I know this is a horrible way of doing it, but I'm going to do so much damage to the board by um, trying to desolder them because they're not for coming off. I mean, my, I've got 400 degrees on the iron here. That should be plenty, and they're not—they're um, just not shifting. So we're going to have to have a bit of a clean up around the board, obviously, to get rid of that old um, electrolyte. Get the cotton bud. We'll have a clean up, and we'll see what we have to clean up. What we can. I'm surprised actually with that leaking electrolyte. It's not done more damage to the um, to the actual board. The board doesn't look too bad. Oops. Right, there we go. Now I wonder... Let's try tinning them um, blobs that we've left up. See, they've tinned up okay. So at least they will take new connections I shouldn't have a problem a problem from that from that point anyway just a really really nasty way of having to do it oops don't stick the soldering iron in your solder tip cleaner instead of the soldering stand that's daft right let's see I just hate the fact I'm having to do that I can't see what else I can do there. Let's try the next capacitor to see if that one's going to desolder. Let's try that one there because I can see where its legs are. And see if this one will come out. I think this one's going to be the same. So I've got a nice hot iron there, and that is, it's just not melting the solder. Uh, I mean, normally what I do is I just float a load of solder around it to um, replace the old crusty solder, and eventually it will come out. I can't do that in this instance just by the sheer number of surface mount components. I'd literally have to take a photograph of the entire area here, depopulate it, take the... Um, Passages off and then repopulate the entire area and for a 10 quid laptop I mean you know if I was doing it and I had infinite amount of spare time then yeah it's you know it's feasible to do things like that but I don't 
uh, I just want the computer working so I can play with it so um, I'm, I'm actually going to go the really cheap nasty route and I'm going to pull the capacitors off and I'm going to solder the new capacitors onto the um, remains that I, uh, I'll leave on the board and so, yeah, apologies to the purists but um, I want the computer working and I can't think of another way of um, that's a 220 at 25 volts I've got plenty of them I can't think of another way of sensibly getting them off there I've got a replacement for that um, and not doing a load of damage to the board I wonder if that one whether I can um, just have a go there's a lot of room around that now whether I can just have a go at pulling that one um, out from this side if we flow a bit of solder around it Ah, got ya. So that worked on this in this system. So at least this one we can put back in the right way. Oh, that smell! Ugh. See the other side um, come out nice and easy. This side's being a pain, and now we've got one side out. We've got a kind. We've kind of committed ourselves that we'll have to get this side out. There we go. Right. Where's the desoldering pump? Hopefully we can clean the um, holes out that uh, we need now, otherwise I'll be drilling them. And we might be drilling them. Anyway, let's get the, uh, get the device prop in there and we'll just have a quick clean round first. Get rid of some of that nasty um, leaked electrolyte. And give us a better idea what we're uh, what we're looking at. And get all these bits of bits of desoldering crud off the board as well, because they're not going to do it any good. Yuck. There we go, that's them gone. Cotton bud for cleaning. There we go. And we can have another go at desoldering them. Uh, <coughs> them bits of solder in there. And have a look on the back. Just, uh, I'm basically just trying to spot. Yeah, I can see where they are. I'm going to try adding a because these ones aren't too too terrible to get to with the iron they're not exactly good but I wonder if I add a little bit of fresh to the underside it might just help us get them out there we go Oh. 
Ah, perfect. That first one we've got clear. Let's try the next one. Not quite. Again, not quite. It's very nearly there. Okay, let's try this again. There we go, that's that one clear. Lovely. Right. So you don't need to see me taking all these capacitors off, so um, I'll come right back when I've um, got the rest of them caps off and we can um, carry on from there. So uh, back very, very shortly. Okay, well we finally managed that. That was hard. Mainly through to the fact, like I said, that solder would just not clear. It won't flow. Um, and there's that many components around there. I risk doing major, major damage to the board if I'm um, a bit too heavy handed with it. So anyway, I basically I managed to sort it. I uh, did resort to drilling, um, drilling the holes out in a few places, I must admit. Now I've got... Um, most of the correct capacitors to go in. The only one problem I've got is there should be a 160 uh, there and I don't have a uh, 160. Uh, I'm going to try putting a 220 in that position. I think it should be absolutely fine um, to be honest with a 220 there. If not then I'll have to get a 160 but I think, um, like I, said, I think a 220 should work absolutely fine in um, that position. Anyway let's get these, um, get these capacitors on the board. So that's um, that's a 220 in that position. Most of them are 220s now, actually. Just then, then well, that one uh, that one 470. Now that's uh, where's positive mark. That's positive, so that goes in that way around. Like that. That's that one in. We want to. We're going to put a 270. Sorry, a 220. Where that? Uh, I think it was a 150. I took out. Uh, that's 220. Yeah, it was a 150. I think a 220 should be okay. And that one goes in again. That one goes in that way. Like that. Push him home. Go on, in you go. Oh, we've got a blocked hole here. Oh, damn. thought that one was free. Let's see if we can um, use the leg just to clear it. Sometimes this works if you just... Uh... And again, I'm not hopeful with this bloody horrible solder. Nope. Nope, that's going to be a pain. Let's... Um... Shall we just drill it? Like I've done on the others where um, they've been a problem. In fact, let's put them two in position and then we'll... Uh... We have to drill that one. We can put these. Uh, we can put these two. We can put these two in position without a problem. Let's just pull them home and spread their legs slightly. Okay. Uh, where's my fine solder? Because we don't want to use that thick stuff. Um, there it is. Secure these in place. We want something nice and fine. Right. I've got some of my fine stuff here. In fact, I wonder if it would be better changing the bit in the iron for um, a much thinner, finer one. I think we'll do that. And see how easy it's going to be to swap this bit while it's still hot. I'm buggered if I'm waiting for the iron to cool down. Let's see what we've got that's nice and fine. That's a very fine tip. We'll try that. I've got something that's 
no, we'll try that. Though. We'll try that very fine one, I think, and we'll see how that uh, how that goes. Where's the iron? And how easy this is going to be to change while it's hot. We will find out. I'll switch the iron off just for safety's sake, but we'll try not to let it cool down, and then we don't uh, lose too much run time. Take that off, put that somewhere where it's not going to I'll put it on there. Then we should be able to slide off the uh, the very hot element. Slide on the uh, not hot element that hopefully will get hot very soon. Let's put the thing back on. Hopefully we can do it up. Obviously this is red hot, so I can't touch it to do this up, but... There we go. Tighten that up. And there we are. Hot swat, literally. Switch back on. We'll, have to, we'll just have to give that a second just to um, come up to temperature, obviously. We'll give it a quick clean and a, uh, a tin up. Interestingly, the ordinary actually detected that the um, end was cool and dropped the temperature showing on the display. It's just climbing back up to 400 now. So hopefully that should be... Yeah, look at that. That's nice and hot now. Right. Make sure that them um, haven't dropped down because I hate my, I hate my capacitors uh, dangling. I like them uh, nice and flush to the board. Yeah, they're okay. We'll start with this side. That's that side soldered. And that's that side soldered. Yep, yeah, happy with that. Go in and do this one. That's that side dump. So it would be better if I didn't have to um, drill the board like I did. But in this instance, you're actually going to do less damage doing that than you are um, than you are keep trying um, to get these components out snip them off there we go. there we are so that's the first two um, first two capacitors replaced there we go there and there now we are going to have to I think drill that hole there because that wasn't coming through then we can stick this one in. So we'll get the old PCB drill with a very fine, um, fine bit in the end. And we'll just go in and we'll just uh, clear that hole out using the. There we go. We can stick this capacitor in there. way around do we go in with that capacitor that goes on with the negative that way same as the others I've got some crud on the leg there from when we tried to uh, 
solder it in in the past so I'll just clip that off that's when we're trying to heat the leg up to push it through before there we go so that one's in situ let's get that soldered in place how delicate it is on this board it's so popular to a surface mount it's ridiculous I could really do with a microscope on this uh, on this particular job that's in and that's in All right, I'm happy with them Let's snip these off there we go that one's fitted yeah I don't think I've done any damage there and last by no means least that one that was absolutely a pain in the backside the first one we started with and I've got this 470 to go on there it is a little bit bigger physically bigger uh, than the original it's exactly the right actual electrical component it's got slightly higher voltage rating but that really doesn't matter um, so you can go up on the voltage rate. Not you know, don't go daft with it. Don't have a 10 uf, uh, sorry, a 10 volt rated capacitor and replace it with a 400. That'd just be stupid. But if you didn't have a 10, you could use a 20, a 25, 35, anything like that, and you'd be fine. Um, this one was, a, I think, it was a 10 we took out, and we're using we're using a 25 to replace it with. Yeah, 470 at 10 volts, and this is a 470 at 25 volts. So don't think. Let me just have a quick look on here, see if I've got anything else, but uh, I really don't think I have. I think um, I've not got anything smaller. No, no, I haven't got anything smaller, so it'll have to be this. But what I've done, basically, I couldn't get them bits out. Um, I was going to do more damage than good, so basically I just drilled. I managed to drill through one of them, and the other one, there was a space next to it where there was nothing. So I drilled through on the space next to it and hopefully, um, obviously it will make a connection and uh, that will work. So it's not ideal but when you're struggling like I was there then you have to kind of um, improvise sometimes. Let's push him home and let's make sure that does actually go in the board. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than the original but it does fit well enough. Um, it doesn't actually look too out of place there, that's fine. And we can solder that in place now from this side. I'm just going to give a really quick clean up around it before I do solder it just because I'd left a bit of um, crud from drilling because actually on that one um, because of all the components around it and I knew there wasn't anything really on the other side that would cause an issue um, I basically I drilled through from um, from this side and the size of that drill bit is the same basically it's the same um, thickness as a component leg it's tiny so um, if you're careful you can get away with it not always recommended um, obviously you know, you're better off getting the thing out but when it's an instance like that where you think you're going to do more harm than good by doing that um, it is a it is a workaround I have used it in the past in fact, I did. I had to do a lot of that on an Amiga board. I worked um, on a couple of months back that had serious corrosion damage on it, and I just couldn't get. I think it was the Gary I had to um, get out to replace the socket, and there was no way. Um, some of them pins were coming out, so I ended up. I just drilled through them. Cut that off, and cut that off. I'm just going to have a quick swab over the board on that side just to make sure there's no um, nothing left that I've uh, I've missed. A bit of isoprop on the cotton bud and we'll just have a quick clean round all the areas we've just worked on. 
It's a bit tricky on this board, literally with the uh, whole amount of surface, that, uh, surface mount stuff that is on here. Um, so for a 1987 computer, I'm actually astounded about it. It is pretty much all surface mount. In fact, I was going to show you, I've got a board out of a... Um, I think it's a 1984 um, IBM um, XT um, computer, a proper IBM one. And you just want to see, you know, if you look at the th all the through hole um, components on that compared with this thing, and this has got its graphics card, its disk drive controller, everything built on. Mm. Anyway, whilst the capacitor's changed, and we might, well, I'm not sure about the, uh, yeah, we should be okay there. I'm just going to run the but the um, soldering iron gently round some of them other, round some of the other capacitors and just have a sm do a smell test. I'm not actually expecting any of them to be faulty, but. This is just a really dirty way of testing for actual leaking electrolyte. If you run your soldering iron round the component and then have a smell, and if you can smell bad fish, then you know you've got a bad capacitor. And actually, no, none of them are um, smelling fishy. So I, I'm honestly, I'm, I don't even think. I mean, let's have a. Nope. So that's an original one. Those I've left in. Um, they've not got a fishy smell to them. So for now, I'm going to leave them. Uh, we've replaced all the ones that I was interested in. So I wonder. I think we'll just switch it on, literally as it is like this. We'll plug the battery in, and we can at least see if the um, if the charge light comes on and stays on. Whether it's going to do that little flicky thing. If it does that little flickery thing, what I might do is just take the battery pack, whack it on the old IMAX B6 for um, half an hour or so, give it a bit of a boost charge, and then try it. But like I said, for now, let's have um, let's plug some power in it, and we'll plug the battery back up it, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. I'm certainly not going to get a horrible, nasty, um, bad fish smell like I did um, I did earlier. And here I was hoping I'd avoid um, capacitor plague on this one. Although I have been warned that I'm probably going to have to do something um, similar with the LCD monitor at some point. Because apparently the electrolytics in them are not exactly brilliant. Obviously we can't do anything because there's no keyboard or anything connected. But um, we can at least power it up and see if that light um, on the board... Can you see that there? That light there. If that light comes on and turns green then red we can tell that it's actually charging the battery uh, we'll see so anyway let's uh, let's switch on no it did what it did um, last time so it comes on for a brief second and then it drops off let's put the let's put the leads on here and we'll see what we're um, getting on the battery there well, that's showing okay. Let's switch on. No, it does appear to be charging the battery like it was, but the light's not staying on. That's the that's the problem. Because that's what was uh, when I um, had it running before. Basically, the um, the battery was taking a charge. Which it appears to be doing now, but um, that light there went from green to red and stayed on red. Like I said I was pretty sure it was taking a charge, but at that point, when I, like I said, when I started smelling um, burning, um, leaking electrolyte, hot electrolyte, so um, I shut off at that point. And then when we tried it after that, we obviously we didn't get that. We would got it um, doing what it did then, where it comes on, turns green, and then goes off again. But. So then, battery, the batteries seem to be charging. It's a bit odd. This. 
let's try it again so we get the green and then it goes off again and at that point when it's it should turn red to indicate that it's charging the batteries and it's not doing hmm wonder why because that was definitely working before but I said the only problem being that uh, we had issues here I mean, with no um, no battery connected, as you can see, it does absolutely nothing. You don't even get a flicker from the light. And we've changed all the electrolytics, which um, could cause an issue there. We have got some um, transistors here, which are also part of the DC to DC converter. Basically, everything in this section of the board here is part of the DC to DC converter which um, is what gives you your charging um, voltage, it's obviously what gives you your power um, to the rest of the board um, it's a bit of a pain this, let's have a think we may have to come and, um, we may have to come and revisit this, um, this unless it doesn't like that unless it doesn't like that um, 220 in that position and it does want a um, 150 UF, I might have to go and see if I can so it's a 150 UF capacitor and I'll swap that out and um, put a 150 UF in there instead um, it's a bit of a pain that really because I, I had I actually did have it charging it definitely was charging let's just give it one last try before we uh, finish this video it's, it really is sod's law No, it's doing that. It's doing exactly the same. Let's see if it does anything if I just try powering off the battery. So we've um, got the power disconnected, we've got the battery connected up, and there is some charge in that battery, but it's obviously it's not got a lot of charge in it. But I'm going to switch it on. Well, do you see that? So it did actually power up for a brief second on um, on the battery. I wonder if this battery is just incredibly depleted. And if I bang it on the IMAX B6 for a bit and um, charge it up, whether it will then actually work. Let's see what the voltage is showing on that battery now. Well, the battery is definitely good. I mean, it's showing 5.27 volts, which is about what I'd expect from a charged battery, but it does drop off fairly um, quickly as soon as I actually put power. So I think that battery is basically just flat it could be the case that it's so flat that it's not actually um, it's not being allowed to be being charged um, by the charge circuit there so if that is the case we can actually uh, we can bring the IMAX B6 in yeah let's do this we'll finish this video here and then in the next video we can see whether um, it's actually worked All right so we've got the IMAX B6 um, I've got the the battery pack I'll show you how you oh, let me just disconnect my uh, yeah we're on a static mat there and I'm not going to be touching the board so um, I'll take my anti-static strap off just for the fact that it's a bit of a pain to um, work with it on when I'm actually trying to like connect something like this up Okay, uh, we need some power for it. It just runs off 12 volts, so I've got an old, um, I think it's off an old LCD TV or something like that. It gives 12 volts at uh, about 3 amps. Which is fine for this um, charge. I think it's good up to about 5 amps. It's not, it's, don't use it, need a huge amount. There we go, that's the charger on. And this thing will automatically detect the, what the, um, the battery is. It's already set to NICAD, so it'll detect. Um, can turn the current up a bit. I think uh, 500 milliamps maximum is absolutely fine. We don't need to go any uh, any more than that. In fact, let's see. And we're only just charging it. Let's try it at 300. I don't mind how long this takes, so um, let's not overstress the battery. 
Uh, right, we need to be able to make connections between that and the um, charger now. So, uh, some scraps of wire are in order, I think. Let's see what we've got scrap of wire wise. That's a nice bit, th nice thick piece. And cut that into, and that'll do. There we go. That's um, some wires. We can just jerry rig in here so we can um, get a charge into the battery. So we we'll push that one into that side. That makes a good contact. Push that one into that side. Make sure that makes a good contact, which they do. We don't want any of these to short out either because that'd be bad. And here we we'll click the black one, obviously, to the black side. That's negative. Connect this one to the red side, which is positive. There we go. So we've got the battery um, connected up to the charger. Like I say, I've got that set to um, 300 milliamps, so it can't really overcharge the batteries. Then all we do is hit start. It'll do a check on the battery. You can see that's um, building up a charge now. It's currently charging at 4.26 volts. It's charging at 300 milliamp hours. So basically, we've just got to leave that. I'll leave that um, charging on there for an hour or two. And um, then, um, well, actually, I've got to go out tonight. So I'll leave it on there for an hour or two. I'll probably switch it off, uh, leave it overnight, and try it again tomorrow. Put another hour in it. Uh, and then I'll try, try actually try it on the um, board again and see if we can get it to charge on the board. So I'm going to leave it there for now because this video is already going to be um, another huge long epic one. So I um, hope you enjoyed that little update on this um, project. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.